There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. Would you be my song and I'll be your sonnet? You be my Hello channel. and welcome to my channel. My name is Kika and today I'm going to share a super quick tip on how to get that blurry background in a photo that looks really pro in, for example, a self-portrait. We're also going to talk about what is aperture and I'm going to try to explain it in a really easy to understand terms so that you can just get more control of your camera and just understand what it's all about. Now these next clips are taken from my online course which is called Creative Photography with Kika and there's a whole module explaining camera basics in a really easy to understand uh, language like there's no techie all these kind of super fancy stuff I don't think you need all that to be able to take beautiful photos. And one of my things, as you know, here on this channel, I try to provide really accessible and easy to understand photography tutorials so that anybody who has the desire and wish to take photos can do so without getting overwhelmed by all these terms and all the lingo that it feels like, oh, do I need to know all this to be able to take photos? My answer, no, you do not. And, um, if you'd like to know more about the camera basics and for example what mode to shoot in because I'm gonna reveal a little secret I hardly ever shoot in manual mode especially when taking self-portraits and in the course I explain all about why so I'll put the link uh, in the description box below so you can check out the whole trailer and there's more information about the course but without further ado let's get to these tips and yeah find out how to get that blurry background and what aperture is Simply put, aperture is what controls what is sharp in your photo and is usually measured in f number or f stops and most cameras go down to about 2.8. That's what my lens goes down to or the lens is what controls it so aperture is in the lens and not in the camera actually. And if you want to have that really uh, blurry background, for example in a self-portrait, you want to use a pretty low aperture. But then on the other hand, if you have a photo where you have a lot of things that you want to be really in focus, having a higher f number or aperture will allow you to do that. A good little rule to remember is that the smaller the f stop, so the f number, the smaller the area of focus in your photo. And the bigger the f stop number is, the bigger the area of focus in the photo. You can see the same photo taken with different aperture numbers going from small to bigger and you can see how much more the photo is in focus as the number gets bigger. For example, if you want a really blurry background, you'd want to use a really low aperture like 2.8 or 3.2, which is also known as shallow depth of field. And if, however, you want to shoot something where you want many things to be sharp, uh, you can use a higher aperture so for example an f-stop 8 so then you'll have just a larger area this will be in focus in your photo in a nutshell really what you need to know when you're working with a camera is how to work with aperture shutter speed and iso and then there's also things like exposure compensation and these other fancy things that you can do but again when you get it explained and you sort of see what it is, you will realize that it's really not at all that difficult. And if you'd like to know how to master and maybe get to that next level of using your camera, or you're thinking about maybe buying a camera and you'd like to know, okay, how complicated is it really? And is it something for me? Then I definitely urge you to check out my Creative Photography with Kika course. There's also all about how to develop a personal style and gain more clarity about your brand and identity and what kind of photos you'd like to take. And there is also three creative photo projects that are all step by step. So it's really easy to follow. And also you'll learn how to use Photoshop so that you can create these levitating photos and combine photos and really take your photography to the next step and also your editing. And it's all really easy to follow. I even had one student say that they had never really understood Photoshop because it felt too overwhelming. But then she was able to watch my course and follow the steps along at the same time in Photoshop and really got it. So that's so great feedback to hear and that it actually helps you in a really concrete way. So it's not all these abstract and oh, maybe you just feel more overwhelmed to create something, but we go straight to business and action and actually make those photos. So when you're done with the course, you have all these wonderful photos that you can share and you have a really good starting point to embark on your own creative photography journey. So click out, 
click out, no, check out <laughs> the link in the description below. And I will see you back here soon. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know about working with a camera and these kind of basics. This was sort of a short and sweet little video. As always, if you'd like to see more of my photos, you can come and say hi. I'm over at Kutova Kika on Instagram. And until next time, see you guys. Bye. Oh, I spoke so fast. <laughs> A bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet, hello.